It's subtle, but the right side is smaller. This is the area involved in spatial processing. This is why you're getting lost during your races. So it's not because I'm spacey? Not at all. You're having a seizure. Alzheimer's. Memory. Stroke. Paralysis. Brain tumor. Surgery. Epilepsy. Seizures. It's natural to simplify these complex, and let's be honest, scary conditions down to their most identifiable symptoms or outcomes. But many times, these generalizations can make things even more frightening. Which is why we have worked for years to help our patients and their caregivers more fully understand what they're experiencing and why. And with so many exciting advances happening in the fields of neurosurgery and neuroscience, we can offer more than just information. We can offer hope. But we didn't want to wait until people became our patients to share what we've learned in our years of surgery and research. We wanted to bring them into the conversation now. We wanted to bring them something intimate and personal, something that brings our fascination and awe of the brain into their everyday lives. We led a creative team to turn some of our most compelling and memorable cases dealing with stroke, epilepsy, brain tumors, and Alzheimer's into a four-act play called Brainworks, the theater of neuroscience. Mixing neuroscience with live theater allows you to not only explore the wonders of the brain, but also to empathize with the characters on the stage. It provides a very human perspective of how the brain works and what the emotional toll is when it doesn't. This episode, we'll look at an especially sneaky case of epilepsy and the revolutionary treatment that allows a young woman to reclaim her life. Welcome to the Theater of Neuroscience. Stay up. Oh, just leave it. We've only got a few to run lines before you've got to get to your cross-country meet. Who are you up against? Belmont High. Bree, come on. It's so bright. It's giving me a headache. It's overcast. In a bright kind of way. Can you just, like, help? Okay, okay. Oh. Now, we've only got a few to go over our lines. This has got to be the greatest production of- Marie, it's a high school production of Alice Through the Looking Glass. It's main stage. <laughs> and you're not even off book. Okay, fine. Where do you want to start from? Let's run the section when Alice meets Humpty Dumpty. Ready? Uh, uh-huh. Okay. Child, when I use a word, it means just what I choose it to mean. Neither more nor less. The question is whether you can make words mean so many different things. The question is, which is to be master? That's all. You seem very clever at explaining words, sir. Would you kindly tell me the meaning of the poem called Jabberwocky? I can explain all the poems that ever were invented and a good many that haven't been invented just yet. Let's hear this Jabberwocky poem. Um... Why? <sighs> Twas brillig and the slithy toves. Ah. Riley, we've been over this part. You know these lines. I know. I'm just... Why is the Jabberwocky even in this? Like, how does this nonsense even relate to Alice? It has to do with Alice's need to persevere through adversity. Her courage to stand up to her fears and vanquish this mythic monster, the Jabberwocky. <laughs> we went over all this. We did? When? Yesterday in rehearsal. <laughs> oh my God, you're such an airhead. You're totally, perfectly cast, just like Alice, lost in your own daydreams. But you gotta get these lines down. You get that, right? <laughs> Riley, you get that, right? Get what? <sighs> Seriously, Riley? You are such a space cadet. <laughs> oh, don't call me that. That's what my mom calls me. Okay, okay. We'll pick this up later. You've got to get to your cross-country meet. I have a meet? OMG, you told me you had a meet against Belmont, remember? Riley? Belmont. <gasps> Duh, Brie, of course. Yeah, I was just kidding. I got you. <laughs> you always got me, Rye. 
Now go bring home a W for the lady unicorns. Oh, I cannot believe that's our mascot. <laughs> so unicorny. Run, Riley, run! <laughs> she reminds me of my daughter. She likes to run too. This your epilepsy patient? Riley. And it's frustrating because it's not like, oh, there it is with the tumor. With epilepsy, there's no X that you can see. It's just a Y running around the brain. A lesion you can't see that's creating all sorts of problems. Even though she looks perfectly healthy on the outside, she struggles just to get through her day. Like learning lines for the school play, running cross country. Right, one minute she's up on solid ground running the race, the next she's down the rabbit hole of a seizure. That's what happened over there when she spaced out? Yeah, that's what her seizures look like. That's a lot different from the way people classically think of a seizure. Usually people assume a seizure is a dramatic event where somebody falls down, whole body shaking. That's just one type of seizure the grand mal seizure. There's many different flavors of epilepsy, some more obvious to the eye than others. Riley has this stealth type of seizure called a complex partial seizure. Complex because it alters her consciousness. Partial because it affects a specific part of the brain, not her whole brain. So complex partial seizure. The confusion afterwards, that's just the after effects. That part of the brain became stunned and non-functional. So many people use the term seizure, but tell us, what is actually happening in the brain when it falls down that rabbit hole? Well, it's like the Jabberwocky. The funny poem from Alice. The Jabberwocky, the mythic creature of mayhem. Okay, maybe you need to show us this mythic creature of mayhem. Okay, so imagine that the neurons in the brain are like a group of people working together to do several tasks. They need to talk to each other and coordinate everything from maintaining breathing to learning lines from the school play. Breathe. Smile. Look to the left. Learn lines. Breathe. Breathe. Smile. Look to the left. Learn lines. Breathe. And so they're working together, but then out of nowhere, one of them becomes the Jabberwocky. Breathe. Smile. Look to the left. Learn lines. Breathe. Breathe. Smile. Brings them going the slimy toad, the hellish toad, toad, all it, bring it to tell Okay, okay. <laughs> Sense. <laughs> The nonsense is so loud and so disruptive that the rest of the group can't communicate. But then, just as quickly, the Jabberwocky disappears. And you're left guessing, where did the Jabberwocky go? Which part of the brain is causing this? Identifying that is the hard part. We've been putting Riley through a whole battery of tests, but until we can locate the whereabouts of the Jabberwocky, we just have to keep running alongside her. Sounds exhausting, like running a marathon. It is for her especially when you take into account the years of misdiagnosis before she came to see me. Wait, all of this has been happening before she came to see you? Yeah, I've only been seeing her for a little while. So what did she think was wrong with her? She didn't know, she didn't have a name for it. That's scary, not knowing. Absolutely, but deep down she knew something was wrong. She intuitively tried to incorporate some coping strategies to at least help her maintain some level of control. Coping strategies, like what? Ryan, are you okay? Oh, hey coach. Yeah, I'm just using Google Maps to try and visualize the race. I'm not familiar with Belmont's course and last week's meet was... Well, I'm trying Coach Carey, but it is so hard. I, I feel like I'm being betrayed mm -hmm. by my mind. My body feels strong, but my mind... It... Last race, you ended up lost in the woods. Do you know how that happened? No. You don't remember anything? Nothing. I just spaced or something, and then I was running through these woods, and these cellos were playing. Cellos. Yeah. That must have been the wind or something. I have never heard the wind sound like cellos. I'm pretty sure that somebody was playing a cello in those woods. Took us an hour to find you. I want you to wear this. Map your race. Let's us find you. It's, it's not going to happen again, coach. I know, Riley. I see you mentally preparing. Shows me your head's in the game today. Now you ready? Riley, are you ready? Hey, hey Coach Carey, have you been smoking? I sm smell smoke. Do you smoke? You're hilarious, Riley. <laughs> now come on, let's tear up the course today. Personal best. You got this, Riley. Ah, uh, you got this. Thank <laughs> you.
So even with the mental mapping exercises, she lost her way. How do we get her back in the race? In looking more deeply at some of her behavioral patterns, it gives us clues to getting closer to where the Jabberwocky is located. Like her impaired short-term memory. She goes to rehearsal, forgets everything, gets lost, can't find her way back. That points to the disruptions in her hippocampus. Exactly, Riley's hippocampus. These little structures are critical organs for forming memories. And they're located on either side of our brain, housed deeply in our temporal lobe. In general, the temporal lobe on the right is involved with spatial processing, and the temporal lobe on the left is involved with speech. So the left hippocampus is involved in remembering words and what was said. And the right hippocampus is involved in remembering the course you ran and how to get back to where you started. So when I go on a jog now, I think about Riley's situation. Do you do that think while you run? Yeah, it's like moving meditation. So, so I'm thinking about Riley as I'm running, and I'm thinking about all the experiments they do on these mice. Hmm. These days, when you want to study this area, researchers put mice in these virtual reality chambers. And where the mouse is at maps exactly to a specific neuron in the hippocampus. You can actually recreate the route the mouse took by looking at the firing pattern of these neurons, which are called place cells. I see. So all signs point towards the hippocampus. But could you find the Jabberwocky? Not yet, but we're getting closer. We just have to look for more oddities, more clues. Like that smoking thing. Right. So Riley experienced a smoke smell. The area responsible for smell is right next to the hippocampus. People who have seizures in, th in this area, what we call temporal lobe epilepsy, report terrible industrial smells. So as that seizure was gearing up, it was probably chaotically activating the smell area to create the false perception of smell. So we are definitely getting closer. Totally. When you look at the areas that process memory and smell, they're also closely connected to the amygdala. Those little almond-shaped organs that mediate our emotions. So on a human level, smell, memory and emotion are tightly coupled. Okay, I get that, but there's another clue. The cellos. That has to be another part of the brain getting tickled by the seizure focus. The area that processes sound is in the same lobe, the temporal lobe, but just a bit further away. We call that Heschel's gyrus. So the smells and the sounds are, are auras, right? That's right. Auras are not technically seizures, just brief brain irritations that create transient alterations in perception, such as sound, smell, even deja vu. And these auras also give us further clues to pinpointing the whereabouts of the Jabberwocky. That's interesting. But for Riley, it's not just during the seizure that her memory's bad. It seems pretty bad all the time. Let's go back to our group of people analogy and look at her brain when she's doing a simple task like tying her shoe before a meet. Breathe. Look down. Drop to a knee. Breathe. Tie shoe. Breathe. Look down. Squeeze the snack. Tone tails overhead. Brilliant to tuggly and hands and bells. Slimy tail. Abyss. 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 The longer that goes on, even when Riley's brain isn't having seizures, her neurons have a harder and harder time communicating. So she forgets to tie her shoe but she forgets other things, too. Breathe. What did you say? Tie your shoe. Huh? Sorry. Drop to a knee. What? Essentially, the neurons become hard of hearing due to all the noise. Exactly. But beyond the purely the biologic injury to the brain, there's a larger social cost because of all that confusion and disorientation. And that certainly was happening with Riley. Everyone called her spacey. Right. There's a real stigma that goes with it. It gets internalized. She starts to believe the narrative that she's just spacey. It's probably why she identifies with that story and Alice so much. Because in some ways, Riley really is living in an upside down world. Speak in French when you can't think of the English for a thing. Turn out your toes as you walk and remember who you are. And then, poof, the Red Queen was gone. And I still don't know whether she vanished into the air or whether she ran quickly into the wood. There was no way of guessing. But all I know is she's now gone and I am, I am just a pawn. And it soon will be time for me to move on. Riley, you got the whole passage <laughs> with just a few little flubs. Oh, thanks for running lines with me, Bree. <laughs> Hey, can you hand me my sunglasses? 
It's cloudy. Can you just hand them to me? You know what I'm thinking? Like, how easy it would be. Easy what? For Alice to just give up, let that Red Queen just cut off her head. <laughs> there would be no story. Right. That's the story. Alice doesn't quit trying to make sense of this crazy world, this place. I think the whole thing is about courage. You know, like one word, courage. Alice has got courage. She's got the guts to keep moving through a world where she's alone and sees everything differently. Where she feels like a pawn being moved by things that don't make sense to her. Yeah, I get that. I mean, we don't live in an upside down world, but as young women, we do get moved around a lot by forces out of our control. Hey there, you listening? Riley! Alice! You in there? You're totally making me feel weird. <laughs> Our adorb space cake, Riley, in the clouds on a cloudy day. Welcome back. Welcome back where? You want your glasses back? I took them right off your face and you did nothing. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. You really gotta stand up for yourself or you're gonna get pushed around, Riley. Oh, look at that. Four instant likes and climbing. <laughs> you took my picture? Oh my God, Riley. How Riley managed in this state for years is heartbreaking. Despite it all, she really is brave. Feeling like a pawn is so central to epilepsy. There's a real loss of control. It leaves her feeling disconnected and hopeless. What about her family? That was part of the larger problem. A lot of the misdiagnosis was coming from what was going on at home. Hey, by the way, how'd the meat go against Belmont? Not great, we lost. How did you do? Did you get lost again, Riley? Knock, knock, Riley? S sorry, I, I was just having the craziest deja vu. Like, we finished all the pizza, but there was just one slice left, exactly like the one left in the box. We eat pizza every Tuesday night. This is a routine, not deja vu. Mm, exactly the same, but Dad was here, and he was like, don't leave the slice of shame, Riley. Riley. I'm sorry, he always said, don't leave the slice of shame. Forget him. How can I just forget? He left us, okay? Poof. It's like fleeting, like a shadow or... Are you on drugs? No, I'm telling you, it's like he was just here. Like, he's here, but not here. Riley, please. Dr. Spiegel's office oh. called. You haven't been going to see her? I don't need therapy. It's the people who feel they don't need... I'm not depressed, Mom. Then you're a first-class space cadet. You sit here, and I say something to you, and you don't respond. Like you had a do not disturb sign hanging from your neck. That's been happening long before dad left. You're traumatized, Riley. He left us and you're having a panic attack. Mom, it's happening in my head. Maybe it's uh, hormonal, thyroid. I'm not blanking out because I'm hormonal. Like whatever the hell you mean with that. Help me. Mom. Here, take this. What is it? Just take one. You're giving me... Take it. It's for anxiety and depression. I'm not and it, depressed. And it will help get you right in the head. Riley, I'm your mom. I want you to get better, so please trust me on this. Take this now. It will help you. And we'll see a doctor as soon as we can. For what? Like a doctor for what? For anxiety? Depression? My daily checking out of this world? I have no clue what to do with you. I really don't. Here. Take this with me. So she was misdiagnosed for how long? Six years. That long. There's so many people out there who are not getting their epilepsy effectively treated. The average time from the onset of the seizure to surgical treatment 
is 11 years. Wait, but most epilepsy patients are treated on medication. That's true, but in many cases, drugs are not enough. That's where surgically treating the abnormal part of the brain comes in. That sounds like you've pinpointed the Jabberwocky. It's taken a while. We've run Riley through a whole battery of tests. The first with an MRI. This is your daughter's brain. Here's the hippocampus. All evidence suggests that the seizures are starting in this area. How do you know? Do you see that the right side is smaller than the other? I don't see it. It's subtle, but the right side is smaller. This is the area involved in spatial processing. This is why you're getting lost during your races. So it's not because I'm spacey? Not at all. You're having a seizure. And over the years, the seizures have further affected your hippocampus. And as you can see here, it's somewhat shrunken and scarred. So it's not my fault. It's actually amazing you've been functioning so well. So many kids with undiagnosed epilepsy completely implode. So you think it's there? Yes, but to totally confirm it, we had to get those electroencephalograms, the EEGs where we oh. recorded from your brain for the last three days. The EEGs, Mom, that's when I had all the wire thingies all over my head. But I thought those showed normal brain activity. Yes, until yesterday. The whole point of the EEG is to monitor her brain waves during a seizure. She didn't have any seizures during the early sessions, but in the last session, she had one. We had a camera on you during your EEG. Would you like to see? Okay, show me. Here you are during your last EEG. She looks normal to me. She is normal, but wait and watch. Now, she has her seizure now. Uh, she looks fine her. to me. That's it? That was me having a seizure? On the surface, it's hard to detect. The effect is so subtle. But let's look at what's going on inside her brain. Here's your normal brain activity. All's looking normal. But wait and watch when the seizure hits now. <sighs> Whoa, that is so messed up. Pure chaos. It is, but now we've mapped it. We've localized your seizures to the right hippocampus. You found the Jabberwocky. The what? Oh, the Jabberwocky, it's from Alice. He's mayhem, this mythic creature of menace. It's been running around in my brain, causing all this. I told you it wasn't about dad. Honey, please, the doctors are very busy. We don't we, need to- We understand. What happened with your dad, the timing, it really complicated this. It was natural to connect the two. Thank you. But your daughter's right. We have to confront the Jabberwocky. Well, how are you going to do that? The laser ablation. A laser what? These days, when, when we find a seizure focus, we do a procedure where we make an incision in the scalp. What, what, surgery? We insert what looks like a glass crochet needle into the hippocampus. The Vorpal Sword! Yeah, in a sense. The laser probe is controlled by a robot, and we can watch it heat and kill tissue in an MRI scanner. Well, how much of her head are you talking about opening up? It's a small incision. What's so amazing is the surgery is minimally invasive. Well, what about after the surgery? Side effects? In other patients, after the laser has treated the bad actor, we often see an improvement in cognition and mood as the brain normalizes. And no more blanking out? I think we have a strong chance of making the seizure stop. Oh, I'm imagining this finish line, and I'm seeing myself cross it. Now, Riley, you aren't 18 yet, so your mother does need to consent. I just... I just don't want her to hurt anymore after all she's been through. Why don't you take a look at this demo to, to help you decide? He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the manxim foe he sought. So rested he by the tum-tum tree and stood a while in thought. And as in uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the tolgy wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, his vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumping back. <laughs> oh, you were brilliant! It's a high school play. I was playing my part. On the main stage. Still feel like a pawn? Sometimes, yeah. But now I feel more and more like, like the queen, able to move confidently in all directions. You are one word, courageous, just like Alice. Oh, thanks, Bree. Hey, will you help me take down this umbrella? 
Egypt. It's really sunny. And I want some sun on my face. <laughs> Come on, help. <laughs> Oh, that is more like it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Queen Riley on a sunny day. <laughs> it's amazing how technology is helping us get better and better outcomes for our patients. The laser ablation for Riley. The endoscope for Sean's tumor. You know, sometimes the plan involves moving the needle not just in biology, but also in engineering. Buckle up, here we go. Engineering is also transforming medicine. I mean, look how it's helping our stroke victims. Engineering has always played a role in how we weather the storm. Okay, okay, engineering nerd. Tell us how engineering has helped your stroke patients. What I really want, what I want, main thing, is to hold your hand again. Last doc I went to told me that if I don't have the ability of using my hand back after six months, it's not coming back. It's going on three years for me. Then he gives me a squeezy ball and he says, good luck. Just to be clear, no squeezy ball. For more information on BrainWorks, the theater of neuroscience, visit brainworkstheater.org.